in a whirlwind performance that included cheesy Europop, anti-war protest, and a continent's sympathy for Ukraine, Sweden has won the 67th Eurovision Song Contest. The Finnish singer-songwriter Karija, a crowd favorite inside the boisterous Liverpool arena, put the Swedish singer-songwriter Lorreen, the night's early front-runner, on the defensive. Sweden's victory ties Ireland's record of seven Eurovision victories. After her infectious 2012 hit Euphoria, Lorreen, 39, becomes the first female to win the competition twice. Russian bombs dropped during the performance on the hometown of the Ukrainian artist, Tvorky, making it one of the most politicized Eurovision grand finals in recent memory. The electronic duo announced on Instagram shortly after leaving the stage that Turnip Hill had been shelled while we sang, about our steel hearts, indomitability, and will, and they concluded with the phrase Europe, united against evil for the sake of peace. On a platform covered in confetti, Laureen accepted the coveted Eurovision glass microphone and declared the victory to be overwhelming and said, I'm very pleased. I'm very grateful. For this, I'm grateful. It's for you. I'm grateful. Laureen, who initially rose to start among Sweden's version of X Factor in 2004, told media she was thrilled to become only the second singer, after Ireland's Johnny Logan, to win Eurovision more than once. It seems strange. It feels fantastic. Isn't it fantastic? She said. This is really lovely. Just appreciation is one sensation that has taken over in my body. I'm extremely appreciative to all of you. Despite not placing this year, she said when asked if Ukraine should be granted the chance to host the competition once the conflict is over absolutely, definitely of course, why shouldn't they? I have performed a lot of gigs there and I adore Ukraine, therefore it kills me to watch what's happening there. With the victory, Sweden will once again host Eurovision in 2019, marking the 50th anniversary of ABBA's victory with Waterloo in 1974. May Muller of the UK came in second to last with her entry I wrote a song, unable to duplicate the success of Sam Ryder's second place spaceman enter in the previous year. Karija was by far the most well-liked performance inside the Liverpool arena but fell short of impressing the jurors of the 36 voting nations. Karija spent the week taking pictures outside his own mobile sauna in Liverpool. As Sweden sped away at the top of the standings, the raucous crowd sang the chorus line from Karija, Chart Chart Chart. Finland received a staggering 376 points in the decisive match, which allowed them to surpass Sweden at the top of the standings amid raucous applause in Liverpool. As Graham Norton, the event's host this year, revealed that Sweden had received more than 243 votes and so won the 2023 competition, a crowd held its breath. It was a night of gravity-defying voices, crass cheese pop, achingly poignant balladry, and of course, moments of sheer craziness that was broadcast from the UK for the first time in 25 years. The strangest point of the evening was when a Croatian pink band performing in military overcoats stripped down to their underwear, exposed enormous rockets, and sang about a crocodile psychopath tyrant, an analogy for Vladimir Putin and his connection with Belarus. There were nevertheless some unexpected events in this renowned well-rehearsed and widely observed spectacle, where thousands of spectators attended three complete run-throughs before to the live broadcast final. The Princess of Wales made a brief appearance in a pre-recorded video playing the piano to Kalush Orchestra's Stefania, a Ukrainian war song, which was last year's winner. For a drum solo for Mountain, whose lyrics are partially inspired by the fight of the Ukrainian people, Queen's Roger Taylor joined Sam Ryder, the UK entry from the previous year, on stage. In the end, You'll Never Walk Alone, a 1945 show tune that has become a terrace anthem in one half of this city was the performance that moved Liverpool Arena to tears. It seemed like the ideal dedication to Ukraine. An all-star choir of previous Eurovision winners, led by the Netherlands' Duncan Lawrence, supplied the backup vocals for video of Ukrainians singing along at the Golden Gate in Kiev and the stadium's sea of lit wristbands. Even Norton, who had switched from hosting to providing commentary, was overtaken with emotion as he admitted to the audience, I have a tear in my dumb old eye. 
It's not something you see every day. Ukraine had hoped to become the first nation to win the competition twice in a row since Ireland in 1994, but it was not to be. With Heart of Steel, their up-tempo love letter to their country, Tvorky, whose Eurovision rehearsals were cut short by Russian shelling, took sixth place and received one of the night's loudest applause from the 11,000-person stadium crowd. The four-hour grand final had a strong anti-war message because there is no end in sight to the atrocities in Ukraine. Oleksandr Kachenko, the cultural minister for the nation, told The Guardian on Saturday that his administration had deliberately asked for the term war to be used in the broadcast, despite the EBU's assertion that it should be completely apolitical. So it seemed when Hannah Waddingham, the co-host, informed the audience that the UK was hosting the competition on behalf of Ukraine because of the war in the first few minutes of the show. The words of Switzerland's performance, I don't want to be a soldier, soldier included falling rockets. I prefer not to play with actual blood. Crazy rockers let three from Croatia issued a nuclear Armageddon warning, while Tvorky from Ukraine was seeking money to provide incubators for infants born prematurely as a result of the war. Fireworks burst from the ancient Three Graces next to a fan park in Liverpool, a city that has taken pride in hosting Europe's craziest music festival, where thousands of people danced late into the night.